Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a SteamOS tutorial and demo. It's totally possible to build yourself a Steam machine right now, however this is the very first release, so it's a bit complicated as far as the install goes, and still lacking a few major features like game streaming. First of all, you'll need compatible hardware in your PC. As of now, this means a system with an NVIDIA graphics card, and a fairly recent motherboard that supports UEFI boot. SteamOS is based on Linux, however out of the box you won't be able to install both it as well as Windows for example, as there's no dual booting. So if you do decide to install SteamOS, keep in mind that it will delete everything else on your hard drive, so definitely be careful. Once you're ready to begin, you need to download SteamOSinstaller.zip from Valve, and I'll have that linked in the description. You can also use the system restore option, which is supposedly easier, however when I tried it I ran into quite a few issues, so for this tutorial we're going to stick to the standard method. Grab yourself a USB drive that's at least a couple gigabytes, and now we're going to freshly format it, so make sure that it's been wiped clean of any data. On Windows, just right click the drive from my computer and select format. Make sure it's set to FAT32, name it SteamOS, and then click format. On Mac, open up Disk Utility, pick out your USB drive, and select Erase. Again, make sure it's set to FAT, name it SteamOS, and you're good here. Now, find the SteamOS installer zip we downloaded earlier, and extract all the files right onto your USB drive. Make sure the files aren't inside any kind of folder, they should be at the root of your drive. Time to get this started. Plug the USB into your soon to be Steam machine, and enter the BIOS, usually using the F10 or the delete key as it boots. Find the boot menu, and enable legacy plus UEFI, or a generic UEFI option. Then make sure your USB drive is set as the first option at boot, and exit the BIOS. If everything worked, you should see the SteamOS install screen show up. From here, just select the automated install, and give it a little while to load everything onto your hard drive. It might appear to freeze a few times, but just be patient and it should complete. Once it's done, you'll see this screen. That means it's safe to unplug your USB drive, and allow the PC to reboot. It will then bring you to a generic looking boot menu. This part is important. Go to the drop down menu, and select GNOME. Then, type Steam as the username, and Steam as the password, both as lowercase, and it should bring you to a mostly empty desktop. You should see a Steam icon. If not, log out and log back in, making sure you selected the right options. Open up Steam, and now it's the same installation process as on PC, so just follow the prompts after it downloads, log in with your account information, and then it should bring you to the normal Steam interface. We're almost there. Go to the top right button, and log out of the Steam user account. It should bring you back to the login screen, select the GNOME option once again, but this time log in with the username and password desktop, again all lowercase. Go up to the activities menu, select applications, and then pop open the terminal. Type this command in exactly as you see it here. I'll also have it in the description if you can't quite read it on the video. Ignore the warning, and type the password desktop in one more time, and it will take a few minutes to create a recovery partition. It will eventually bring you to this screen after a reboot. Just type Y, hit enter, and let it do its thing for a couple minutes until it boots natively into SteamOS. Congrats, you have a Steam machine up and running. For you guys who have stuck with me this long, good job! Now let's take a look at what SteamOS is all about. The interface is basically the same as big picture mode, as you've got support for the mouse and keyboard, along with the wired Xbox 360 controller right out of the box. You can browse through games and take a look at all the info, screenshots, etc. And by default, it shows everything. However, you can sort by Linux games in the store to see what actually works on SteamOS, as well as sorting in your own library the games that you can install. Things are fairly basic, however, you do have your standard options, along with information to check what version of SteamOS you're running, hardware info, and a check for updates button. There's also a basic web browser included that works decently with the controller. The first game I tried was Metro Last Light, which is one of my surprise favorite games of this year. By default, the screen was way too dark, but after bumping up the gamma, everything looked fine. Unlike the Windows version, the quality settings boil down to a single slider, which really annoys me, as it's hard to fine tune the visuals. Speaking of, with a GTX 650 Ti boost, it's not too bad. It's hard to say what the equivalent settings are normally, but it looked to be somewhere between low and medium by default. Turning things up resulted in better quality, but a pretty poor frame rate that ended up crashing right out to SteamOS. Left 4 Dead 2, on the other hand, is an almost exact port. You've got full control of your quality settings, and you can enable the controller and the options. For the most part, it runs just fine, however I ran into quite a few weird hangs where the camera would just pause for a moment, especially when the game was loading a new area of the map. So what do you guys think of SteamOS? Are you going to give it a shot? Let me know in the comments below. 
Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like this, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're always kept up to date with the latest and greatest. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.